Hello everyone, Sonny here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build an extremely cheap, easy to build, and very efficient gas farm in your Bedrock Edition worlds. This gas farm is incredibly efficient as well, producing over 4,400 gunpowder per hour, over 2,800 tiers per hour, or over 7,200 items an hour in total. It is super straightforward to build, it is single player friendly, it works on any world realm server, and you can also customize it to be any size that you want as well. A single side of this farm will produce over 2200 gunpowder per hour, and if you end up building both sides of the farm, that'll give you 4400. For how good this farm is, it's mostly just a couple layers of slabs, some scaffoldings, and a whole bunch of minecarts. There really isn't anything too expensive, but you'll probably want an iron farm before you try to build it. This new gas farm produces so many items that it completely outstrips the old designs that I have here on the channel, including the old amazing to look at minecart design. A single cell of the new design produces more than this old giant farm, and with two cells of the new design, it also completely destroys the rates of the nether portal design as well. So this is an extremely good gas farm. To put the rates into some perspective, this is what you'll get in one an hour of running the farm, an entire double chest of all of those goodies, and another entire double chest of those goodies, plus a little bit more on the side. That is way more than enough gunpowder for a single player. It's probably enough for a whole rocket shop if you play on a server. It's more than enough for all of the rockets, boom blocks, or boom crystals you would ever need. So this is one side of the gas farm. This will produce over 2,000 gunpowder per hour, and if you are really overpowered, then you could even build a second side of it and get over 4,000 gunpowder per hour. However, I think for most players, this side right here will be more than enough. It looks like a really big, complicated farm, but in reality, it's just a whole bunch of slab platforms, some scaffolding, and a few minecarts. You could even build this smaller if you wanted to, chop off a couple layers, make it thinner, chop off some of these edges. You can build it whatever size that you want to, and by the time you're done watching this video, you'll understand exactly how to build this, and you can customize it to be whatever size you want. This farm is designed to work on any simulation distance and any world, realm, or server that you might be playing on. You can build it anywhere that you want. It is optimized for a simulation distance of 4, so if you're playing on sim 6 or above, you could actually build it larger than this if you wanted to, but this farm already produces more than enough items, I think. We are using split density in this mob farm, meaning that we're using two mob caps for this farm, so the mob cap for gas is only two, so you can have a maximum of two gas on one side and then two gas on the other side. This is really, really helping out our rates. If these mob farms were just like both here and the center, the rates would be destroyed and you would only have two gas total, which is why we separate them out. Having the ability to kill four gas at one time is incredibly helpful to get much more gunpowder. One thing you need to know about the farm is that you need to turn it off before you log out of the game or leave the area. If those trident killers are running as you leave the area, all the tridents are going to fall down and then you will have to go up there and rethrow them. And you'll probably need to drink an invisibility potion to avoid all of the gas firing at you. So make sure you turn it off and you'll be golden. And on that note, if the farm is on, you need to be standing right here in the center. It is about the maximum size it can be. So if you go one wandering off from this spot, some portions of the farm might get unloaded, so only have the farm turned on if you're standing right here. The mechanics behind this farm are incredibly basic and so dead simple, it's actually pretty amazing. So a mobs will automatically get into a minecart as soon as they touch it, and of course gas are like super duper big, so one minecart in the middle of a 6x6 six six square right here will pick up any gas that spawn in this area. So this one minecart covers this entire area, meaning that we need very few minecarts to cover an entire farm. So any gas that spawn on this platform will automatically get into that minecart basically as soon as they spawn, as you can see he's in there. And of course, if this minecart is actually powered on an activator rail, it's going to be shaking. So anything that gets into that minecart is going to be automatically ejected. So if a gas gets in here, it's going to be auto ejected from that minecart. As you can see, it's not actually in there anymore. He's free to fly around and we can use this mechanic to actually send our gas upwards incredibly incredibly quickly so if any gas spawn in this six by six of gold blocks right here it's going to be automatically sent up to our kill chamber 
very quickly, like faster than you can even see. Basically, they're the fastest gas alive. So if we summon a gas at that armor stand down there, you can see just how quickly they go up. It is very, very fast. And of course, this operates across the entirety of the farm. And then up here, we are using trapdoor trident killers, which kill the gas in two hits, and it hits them back to back very quickly as well. Overall, this is an incredibly fast little gas farm. You can also send the gas horizontally or even diagonally as well. However, this consumes way more redstone and minecarts and all kinds of shenanigans. So not really worth it. Going vertical is definitely much more resource light. So if we summon a gas over here, as you can see, he moves along very quickly and it's actually pretty cute. <laughs> I do really like it. So we did a bunch of testing on this, but ultimately horizontal isn't quite great for a ghast farm. So Groove Guy is the original discoverer of this minecart mob mover, and it is just so good. It's incredibly useful for ghasts, especially because they have such a big hitbox around them. You can get away with using very few minecarts, and overall, it is just great. So huge thank you to Groove Guy, and also thank you to Zipper for helping me tweak and design a little bit of this farm as well. Overall, it's turned out very well. Well, so thanks again to Groova and Zipper. And let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? For your convenience, there is a full materials list down in the description of the video. That way you know everything you need to build with. There's also a world download on my website, silentwhisperer.com. You can download this world, check it out for yourself, try it out, and see exactly how it's built. Link is down below. The first thing that you need to do is find a good location to build. You are looking for a salt sand valley biome over a large lava lake like this one right here. You can tell if it's a salt sand valley because it'll have this nice blue fog. And this is basically what it looks like if you don't have any night vision. Soul Sand Valleys also have these dark ash particles falling through the air. You can see them. They're little tiny, like basically little black specks. And that's how you can also tell if you're in a Soul Sand Valley biome. Basically, you're looking for the biggest lava lake in a Soul Sand Valley that you can find. You're going to need about 90 blocks from the bottom of the farm on the south side to the top of the farm on the north side. And then you'll need at least like 30 blocks to the east and west ideally you want to have you know 40 blocks in every direction from the middle of the lava lake that way you don't need to spawn proof everything picking a good location is completely necessary because you do not want to have to spawn proof a bunch of the nether so take the time find yourself a good lava lake to build in you can make this a lot easier by going to the website chunkbase.com, going to their seed map, and then inputting your world seed and bedrock edition, and then selecting the nether. This will show you a map of the entire nether around you, and you can put in your coordinates down here at the bottom. So basically, each one of these big brown, like, blobs is a soul sand valley biome so you can look at this map find out which one of these biomes is the biggest and then go visit those in your survival world or in a creative copy and find out which one of those has a massive lava lake for you to build in exploring the nether naturally could take hours so just use trunk base you'll save a lot of time once you found a suitable lava lake we need to go up to y level 78 and we're going to build ourselves a couple of small platforms just out of temporary non spawnable blocks like some glass so you should be standing at y level 78 and you might have guessed it but these are chunk markers so each one of these is the outline of a chunk there's a ton of different ways to find chunk borders on a bedrock. You can find a tutorial on how to do that in the description and in the I cards as well. Basically, all you need to do is mark out these four chunk borders at Y level 78. That is north, and this is going to be going to the south. To check your directions, place down a sunflower on a piece of dirt. These always face to the east, so if you turn left, that is going to be north. And of course, if we check this with our chunk border resource pack, you can see the chunk borders are going right between our markers here. So this is really simple. And we're going to be AFKing right in the middle of this platform. So count in eight blocks from the edges. This two by two is the exact middle of this whole platform. And then we're going to be standing in between these glass panes to lock us in place. And this is the AFK spot for the entirety of the build. So we're going to be building one side of this farm together. The farm is basically exactly the same on both sides. So once I show you how to build one side of this farm, you will know how to build the other side and you can double it at any time you want. You can start off small and go big later. So we're going to start building on the north side of the farm. You'll want to mark out the center two blocks of your chunk edge up here and then grab yourself some slabs. We're going to place some 
blocks right there and then some more slabs to the north of it and basically we need to make ourselves a little six by six platform our entire farm is going to be constructed using these six by six platforms because this is the range that a minecart can pick up a gas so once you have this installed place down yourself a sunflower just to double check that that is north and we need to find ourselves the northwest corner which is this one and go in three blocks from there and place in our scaffolding that is going to be where our minecart is a little bit later if you put a minecart on top of there it's going to pick up any gas that spawns on the six by six we're also going to place in ourselves a few torches on the corners to prevent skeletons from spawning because those guys will hurt the rates of your farm so that is your first six by six in total we need nine of these so four more going in that direction and four more going in that direction as well you can alternate your slab material if you like that might make it a little bit easier to build with or you can build it all out of one material and just use the torches on the corners to tell you where the like edges of your six by six squares are so that is our first three squares done we need to do another three squares going in this direction and another three squares in that direction so this is what it would look like once you have nine of these in place so once you actually start building this platform you're probably going to get gas spawning on here immediately so it's going to be a good idea to put in some temporary mine carts at this layer just to capture two of those gas i would highly recommend that you capture two gas box them in name tag them and that way no more gas will spawn in the area as you're building the farm it might take a little you know trickiness to get them in a minecart and into a box but it's definitely going to save you some headache so once you have those guys in cages you can just go ahead and remove those temporary minecarts and now we need to have another seven of these squares going behind these so we have nine on the front and then seven in the back and that's what it should look like once you have all of your squares complete this is the first spawning platform completely done you can build up to five of these we're gonna have one more above it and then basically like two and a half below it if you just want to start out with this platform and then one more above it that is perfectly fine you can add the lower ones on later to upgrade the farm it is really flexible you can build it whatever size you want so all of our spawning platforms are going to be four blocks between them and then you know the gap for the half slabs so our top spawning platform is going to be a y83 the one that we just built is of course at y78 one going down from there is at y73 the next one going down is at y68 and then the next one going down is at y63 so that is going to be five spawning platforms in total the top four of these are full size of platforms and then the one on the very bottom only has nine squares on the front there's none on the back because those ones are out of range from the player if you're playing on a simulation distance of four it's basically the exact same build process that we just did for this platform just build it you know three and a half more times typical tutorial jump cut the entire farm is a nearing completion once you have all these spawning layers in place so of course the very top layer the original layer and then the bottom two and the very bottom one only has squares on the front there is none on the back so essentially it's like four and a half spawning platforms these scaffold pillars are really easy you just need an additional two on top and then one on the side an activator rail right there minecart on it and then a lever and then just flick that and that's essentially all there is to it so you're gonna have you know three scaffolding and then you minecart your lever now for the back ones they need to loop away from the farm so the levers should be on the outside edges of these platforms kind of like that and that's basically all there is to it for your spawning platform with the minecarts you need to do that for all five layers of your farm of course and this is what it would look like once the entire farm is full of your minecarts you got minecarts wiggling everywhere they're just all happy doing a little dance you need to be careful not to nudge these minecarts because if they fall off of here or get on the ledge like that they're just going to hold a gas and they're not going to eject a gas upwards into the kill chamber so make sure they're all centered properly on top of the scaffolding pillar they should never get knocked off during normal use of the farm but if the player bumps into them then that'll cause them to fall off 
but otherwise they should be perfectly stable and the gas themselves shouldn't move them at all. One of the final things to do is to come into this area and just break out all of these access blocks that you have because you don't need these glass blocks here. These are going to be wasting some spawning spots. Just go ahead and fill those back in with some regular slabs and you are good to go. You can actually remove the entire chunk of border system that you set up, but I think they're kind of nice looking, so I'm going to leave them. And now it's time for the kill chamber and item collection. So go to the upper right corner of the farm and we're going to place in a couple of temporary blocks. You want a solid block there, two blocks out, and then a block up like so. So basically, you know, just four. And you should have yourself five blocks in between these mine carts if everything is lined up and built correctly. So what you need to do is place in another temporary block right here and then a temporary double chest for your item collection. Place in a whole line of hoppers going until you line up with these first mine carts. And then we're going to break out all of these temporary blocks. We don't really need those anymore. And then you want to place yourself two hoppers lined up with your minecart here. Slabs above all of these ones in the center. And now we're going to place in ourselves a saw block above there. A glass block right there. And then a rail facing to the side like that. You also want a glass block there. And then another glass block on its side. And then a trap door in front of it that you can flick up like so. Just to contain all the items inside of there. That way no items are lost from the farm. So now we're going to place in a temporary block above that and a rail right there. Minecart on the bottom, minecart on the top. Break that one. That's going to get you two minecarts in there. That way you can hold two gas at one time. And now we need a trapdoor right here for the trident killer. But you can't just place it in all willy-nilly. You got to place it in in a specific direction. That way it doesn't break because of bedrock edition. So basically you just need to be facing south. If that is north, if we turn around, that's going to be facing south. And the trapdoor just needs to be placed in like that. That way it's flicked up towards, you know, the minecarts like that. And that is this entire kill chamber done. We essentially need to do that exact same thing over here. Once you have this side built up, you also need to be facing south for this trapdoor. So that one faces upwards like so, and so does that one. They're basically in the same orientation, just on either side of that block. And now we need to build a killing cell at each one of these minecarts. So we're going to be just basically bringing over this hopper line and extending it out. Every single one of these hoppers going down the middle is going to have a slab on top of it. And then as we place in all these solid blocks, we're going to be connecting those up with a slab line and redstone dust on top of all of them. So go ahead and build that up and extend it all the way out. So once you have your entire killing station set up, as you can see, it's basically just the exact same thing at every single one of your cells. So we're going to go to the right side over here and install three upper slabs right here. And those three are going to have redstone dust on it. And then you want another one with a comparator and a couple more right here with some more redstone dust right there. And just go ahead and get in yourself a temporary lever, put that on subtract mode, and then just flick that. And then we're going to go ahead and install a repeater at every section where the redstone runs out of signal strength. So you need yourself a repeater right here and then another one at the end over here and then another one right there and that is going to power all of your trap doors and now we need in a very important bar of glass if you don't install this your gas will not go into the mine carts all the time so place in three temporary blocks right there and then one block over and place in a block up like so and this is going to be the height of our bar this is going to be going three blocks to either side of our mine carts so if that's lined up with your mine cart it's going to be going three blocks over from there and then just bring this going all the way across the entirety of the farm until you reach the far side of it until you have three blocks to the left of that minecart and then you need to do the same thing on this side as well so three blocks up one over and then you have your three blocks over from your minecart like so and bring that all the way across the farm this is essentially going to push the gas down and that is going to push them into the minecarts that way they actually get killed by the trident killer so of course you probably don't want your on and off switch to be like all the way up here at this corner that's also just not practical if you have two of these sections so what you need is a repeater running into a block behind the comparator and then just a redstone line that runs all the way across until you get to the center of the farm and then you can just run a redstone torch tower up 
from your on switch so you can put your on switch wherever you want and then you flick that that's going to turn on an optional redstone lamp and as you can see all of those trident killers are now turned on so again you can put that wherever you want it's basically just a redstone line you really cannot mess up this part now you can also move your chest as well but that's going to require a lot more hoppers so what i would recommend doing is building yourself a little bit of an enclosed hallway right here that way you can actually walk up here and get to your chest and your item collection and then maybe what you do is just bring a hopper line over and then have yourself a sorting system like right here or so completely enclosed that way no gas can see you the tridents on this build are super accessible however if the farm is actually running or you know if you don't have some gas captured in the area to take up the mob cap then you're going to want to use an invisibility potion while you're up here and gas are actually super weak so you can just smack it with a sword and that'll one hit kill it so basically all you gotta do is throw a single unenchanted just regular trident right on top of that trap door and you're gonna want to do this going from the back to the front because if you walk up here that's actually going to pick up the trident as you see if I walk past that I'm gonna pick it up so start at the back it's gonna take a few tridents however tridents are actually remarkably easy to get on bedrock edition I have a very very simple trident farm you can check that out tutorial link is everywhere and once you've thrown all your tridents, you can place in a temporary lever behind this comparator, or flick that on, and make sure that all of your trap doors are flicked up in the correct orientation. And as you can see, all of our trident killers are now working. So if you have any captured gas in the area, go ahead and kill them because your farm is now ready to go, and you should see some gas spawning very shortly. So there you go. You can now go ahead and flick this lever, and that is going to kill them, as you can see there. Now again, you cannot leave this little cage right here, otherwise you guys on the very far corners will actually despawn. Now you need to be holding yourself a looting three sword to apply the looting effect to all of your gas, and that is going to give you two and a half times more drops from the farm than if you weren't holding a looting sword. If you want to build a farm on the south side, it is basically identical to building one on the north side. However, there is a slight difference when it comes to placing in the scaffolding. So because we place in the scaffolding based off of the northwest corner, the scaffolding is actually shifted diagonally a block. So typically you would be placing it in right there. However, you're going to be placing it in, you know, a block diagonal to it. So we are placing it in directional based on northwest. So that is still north. This is still the northwest corner of your six by six square. And we're still placing it in three blocks diagonal from that northwest corner. Hopefully that makes sense. It is a slight difference between the north and south designs because of the directionality of Bedrock Edition. The other difference for the southern farm is that instead of having our redstone and storage on the right side, all of that stuff is going to be over here on the left side. So basically our hopper line just goes in the opposite direction, and this makes it easier to connect up to this redstone line that we built for the north farm. Of course, you're also going to want to build a box around your AFK spot. That way, no gas or outside mobs can see you when you are AFK. And you should also box in basically this entire area leading up to your on switch and get yourself a nice pathway leading up to your storage system that you would have on either side of the build. If you enjoyed this extremely simple and overpowered gas farm, then drop a like on the video as it helps out the video and the channel a ton. Let me know if you need any help down in the comment section. And if you're new here, then consider subscribing. That way you don't miss future OP tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you down in the comment section in the next one. And then there was silence.